All right. All right, then. Well, uh, welcome to Get Offset. My name is Emily, and I'm here today with uh, a submarine pickup. It's already on the guitar. Um, but I'm going to reach over here and uh, grab another one for you. Uh, and I want to go ahead and shout out our Patreon supporter, David Ishizaka. Uh, he sent me his submarine pickup a while back. I never got the chance to um, actually play his. I was just so swamped with some other projects. Um, and then I thought I lost it when it was time to send it back to him. I bought him a new one. And then as soon as I saw the box that this came in, I thought, I know where that is. <laughs> and uh, so now I own one. And uh, I'm going to have some fun with mine. Um, might have some fun with his. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how this works. Um, and what comes in the box. So uh, this is what it looks like. It looks like a submarine. I'm going to hold it under this camera as well. Uh, it's probably going to be a little bit off focus. You see some other pet. You see some other petals here. I'm actually going to hold it up to this camera also. You can see why they would call it a submarine. It very much looks like one uh, traditionally. And you'll see two little divots there that line up with the strings. On the back there, it's a little sticky surface that actually holds quite well to the to the guitar. It stays in there pretty sturdily. Uh, there's a little eighth inch, I think that's a 3.5 millimeter jack there. Uh, plugs in two little height adjustment screws. They give you an Allen wrench. They also give you the cable that that attaches to. Um, and a little extra magnet uh, for some mounting purposes is my understanding. I did not need to use that. And it's a three-way switch. One position that uh, just has one string on two position has both strings on uh, so typically that would be the low E string for most mounting scenarios E and A string and then the third position would be it just uh, turned completely off uh, so a couple a couple options there you could of course mount it to the high strings uh, most people don't tend to do that uh, most people tend to play this uh, the, the, this uh, submarine pickup uh, kind of as a, a bass player. And that's how I have it set up on the Jazzmaster today as a little E and A string bass player. If you had a sneak peek before, I have a special edition Chemist V1.5 from Matthew's Effects. I have that uh, with just the octave down kind of... Close to 50% blend, not quite completely there. And I have that with the Mazette uh, lower drive going into the Strymon Iridium on the round B setting with the bass, treble, eh, you know, who cares? Uh, bass, treble, up, mids, kind of up, yeah, mids at noon, uh, bass, treble, kind of, I'm going to turn the treble down, it's good. Who cares? You're not even hearing those. So um, I am running my guitar also. Through. So I'm, I'm kind of cabled up. So let's talk about this cable run because it is, I'm not going to lie. If you're playing this live, it's pretty fucking annoying. I'm not going to mince words. I'm going to say the F word about it. Um, but it's pretty, also pretty damn cool. Um, I've been playing around with it for a bit this afternoon. I'm kind of sad. It took me so long to get to it. I'm glad I own one now. But, you know, mounts there, wraps around here. Gonna have, um, hook, uh, they recommend Velcroing it to your strap. Live, if I played it live, I would absolutely do that. Um, it hooked into the octave pedal, for sure. Could not find my OC5. I'm sure I will laugh when I do find it. So that's in my octave pedal, which is a separate part of my pedal run, obviously. Um, and... Then I have my guitar plugged into my regular Sunday Crush pedal board. I'm only going to be playing through the Halberd and the Albi. Um, and I will probably do a little muting and toggling of tracks as I do the editing, uh, just so you can kind of hear uh, the separation there a little bit. So um, let's let's get to playing. Uh, I'm going to turn the... the um, the submarine off to begin with. Uh, this is just clean signal. Um, using the amp I'm using is basically the Cab Zeus 
uh, for the guitar, guitar, the regular Sunday Crush run, and the Strymon Iridium. Um, let me just make sure I have one. So right now it's on the mono. I am going to have some fun with this. I'm not going to get into all the settings quite yet. I'm going to see how far I can get into the features, into the wildness of this guitar, of the submarine, because I know it can do stereo stuff and I have some stereo things uh, kind of hooked up, ready to go. I really hope I can get into them. I'm not a hundred percent sure I'll have time today. So let's um, get into it. It's like, can this replace a bassist? Maybe. Let's find out. Let's turn the submarine on and I'm mostly going to use it on, on both settings. You can definitely hear it. Um, if I turn off, if I got the volume pedal down on the other, on the on the whole guitar. I mean, the tracking on the Chemist isn't perfect, but the OC5 wouldn't be perfect either. Neither would my even tied H5 if I used one of the uh, settings on that. So. does add some oomph though to the playing. So um, yeah, let's just keep playing with it. does not happen at all on the D. But you can hear it on the lower strings. You know, in the videos, like on the website, they do tend to show it mounted closer to the neck. I do find it getting in the way, um, mounted where it is. On the Jazzmaster, it's pretty essential to mount it. That's about as high up as I can mount it because otherwise it would get in, in the way of uh, some of these controls here. So that's my beef. I'm going to turn on some more gain. I'm going to head over and uh, hit uh, the lower drive setting on the diving bells. Ha. And fix my in-ears a little bit. I can also turn up the gain and volume on the uh, Mazette. Get more of that going.
if we just use it on the E string, see if that cleans it up at all. I think that is a little bit cleaner. It's basically intended purpose. Um, I think that if you have a, an, an octave pedal that tracks a little bit faster, it's going to sound a little bit sweeter, a little bit more natural. Um, if you like the charming nature of kind of a wackadoodle uh, tracking, I kind of I kind of like it. Um, I think it works better when it's just on the E string. I think it sounds a little odd <laughs> on the A string, but I also think that sounds fine. Um, you know, it is what it is. So you kind of, I think you should probably take it, take it as it is. So, um, that's kind of my thought with that one. I'm going to try, see if I can do something kind of weird next. So let me see if I can make that happen. And if I come back and say I couldn't make it happen, please be understanding. All right, so what I am going to try to do, I'm gonna turn down all the volumes. So this says that you can plug in a splitter cable like this guy, and you can send the E and the A string to separate channels. So I think that sounds freaking weird. I don't have a lot of like stereo pedals super duper handy, uh, like within arm's reach. Oh. Oh. So, oh wait, no, I have the rooms right here. Ha! <laughs> And I have the H9 by Eventide. I had you going. Um, so I'm going to try... The thing is, this is not like the longest cable. This is not a long cable at all. So um, everything's going to be extremely awkward. Uh, so I have also the split meld, which may help. But I'm going to just like kind of... You know, mess around and find out, as the children say. So, pray for me. All right. So, I'm going to see what happens with the, the Bebo here, which has currently no inputs or outputs. But I chose the Bebo because uh, the Bebo has TRS ins and TRS outs, and the uh, the Strymon Iridium takes stereo via TRS in. So it seemed like a perfect easy match for my uh, wacky, wacky old situation. So um, let's pan to that camera and get a little patch going. I kind of wanted to start from scratch. I just forget how. Hmm. Wait. All right. All right, so I'm getting separate A and separate E. Good start, Emily, good start. I'm gonna delete. All right. Uh, reset, I don't, how do I delete? Ah. It's been a minute since I played with this pedal. All right, so I'm going to hit back and delete. I'm going to add effect, add an effect, and let's see what I can do.
Now I'm just thinking now I could have put everything through, uh, if you could put everything through an octave down first and then you could put it through all these effects, but I won't do that today. All right. Oh, I'm just keep, I just keep, I'm just getting a little, a little overwhelmed with options, a little overwhelmed with options. Um, I just want a chorus. I know, I'm, I'm going with this instead. I think this says I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I have to actually connect it to things, which is what I did wrong, I think. So, I gotta connect to that in and out R. you would super duper want to do this but I'm doing it so you can know so you can learn how all right synthesis weird disconnect that wet dry so I'm just gonna really quickly uh, blend in the rest of the board make some stupid noises because this doesn't make any sense for anything holy shit it happened again I have a problem with distance I'm on a short leash. Turn up the gain there. I'll adjust the volume and post and do some fun stuff.
I'm gonna unplug myself from this prison. Whoop. I am going to turn off the volume on this guitar. And I'm gonna give my final thoughts, because why the hell not at this point? Um, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. I didn't think it would be that cool to run weird ass effects through just the two low strings that didn't really even involve octave stuff at that point. Like, I had some pitch bendy, some chorus, and I thought that sounded pretty neat just from like having a few minutes with it even. I'm sorry that took a while. I uh, haven't, haven't played with the poly in, in a hot minute, but like, honestly, that, that sounded kind of fun. That sounded weird. It sounded off kilter. It sounded unusual. And I thought it sounded a lot more cool and neat and, and super, uh, again, just weird. I liked it. I would do that again. That was fun. Shit. Yeah, so um, that's, that's my thought on the submarine. I'm sure that wasn't like the world's most helpful demo and the comments are going to be like, you're right, it wasn't helpful. I'll be like, joke's on you. You watched the whole 30 minutes and you got to the point where I said that probably wasn't very helpful. Ha ha! <laughs> now, uh, that was that was fun. I'm glad I have one. I think it'll probably, probably be more of a studio tool. I would not want to use it live, particularly. Uh, supreme kudos to anybody who does use this thing live. Uh, please tell me how uh, you managed to not hit this little dial all the time. You must be very, very careful. I know they also have the one that goes all the way under uh, the fingerboard, under the strings, I mean. Um, and that's really interesting to me. I, I'm really curious about that. I might pick pick up one of those or inquire, inquire about that one. But this is a very, very creative tool. And, like, it's just, it's neat, man. Damn. So again, big thanks to um, David Ishizaka for uh, sending this my way. Uh, and it is also a friendly reminder of why I don't borrow gear from subscribers. Uh, because I lose it. Please don't offer to send me things. Sorry. Unless you are a brand. Uh, please don't send me things that you intend to get back. You're not gonna. Sorry. David is the exception and I am was plagued with guilt for a month and a half while I waited for the new submarine pickup to come in. So yeah, those are my thoughts on, on, on this pickup. It's neat. It's cool. I'm probably going to play with it more. I might even play with the other one before I send it back. Maybe I'll put it into the high strings. <laughs> probably not. Uh, until yeah, well, I guess, um, like, comment, subscribe below. Check us out on patreon.com slash get offset. We have merch at get offset podcast.com slash shop. Thanks for watching. Thanks for understanding. Until next time, my name is Emily. Goodbye.